this agent. People that get caught up in that, number one, they don't understand the full power structure. These people like Rockefeller, you know, who they think are Zionists, or the people in charge of all the media and banks, they're not real Jews. Okay, just like the Pharisees weren't real Jews. Just like the Pope's not a real Christian. You know, okay, Alex, so you can come back and finish this with Gucciardi if you want. Uh, because it's an important subject, and I, I can't cut you off. And Brian and Rich, if you guys want to hold, I'm sure you sure don't want to take your calls. The attacks on us are from all different quarters because most of it's stirred up by the establishment because we're bringing people together around free market and around family and around sovereignty. That's why they want to get us fighting in little subgroups. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. This is the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and I will be your host for the rest of the show. We've got a lot of interesting news to cover, including some news that Joe Biggs is going to come in and talk about from a firsthand experience as well, about how ISIS could be gaining nuclear capabilities, and they claim that they're going to wipe out millions through some type of religious cleansing ceremony by using nuclear weapons. We're also going to talk about how the mainstream media is dying. We have some victory stories, some good news, some inspirational news, some new Gallup polls that show that trust in Congress is completely decimated. The mainstream media is dying. Alternative media is rising. And we're going to talk about how finally scientists are admitting that obesity and diabetes and a number of other conditions are actually a result of the chemicals that you're being exposed to on a daily basis. First, I'd like to get right into this new Gallup poll, which is exciting stuff. And we've seen this pretty much every single year they do one on this subject. Headline, America's trust in media remains at historic low. This is from Gallup directly, just came out. Four in 10 Americans trust the mass media, only four. Ties 2014 and 2012 for the lowest trust level in Gallup's trend. Younger Americans less likely than older to trust the media. It says, Four in ten Americans say they have a great deal or fair amount of trust and confidence in the mass media to report on the news fully, accurately, and fairly. So it ties in with the past couple years. So about four in ten Americans actually trust the mainstream media. And, you know, I went to CNN. I read this Gallup poll and I decided, well, you know, I'm going to go to CNN and see how, how much I trust the mainstream media, which, of course, is not much. But I did discover key breaking news under their Featured news section, such as Facts of Life star Kim Fields joins Real Housewives of Atlanta. That is, of course, essential breaking news. Don't worry about ISIS getting nuclear weapons or some type of event inside the United States or really anything that's important. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And what you have, a beloved sitcom schoolgirls and their house mother. Let's see what the ladies have been up to since the show. 1988. Wow. Key news, second piece of key news from the mainstream media, which no one trusts anymore. Again, this is under featured news on CNN.com. LL Cool J's son, Najee Smith, arrested after a restaurant fight. LA's LL Cool J's son was arrested early Tuesday in New York after a fight in a restaurant where two law enforcement sources, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Really important news. Thank you, mainstream media. It's no surprise and no wonder that so many people are turning to real independent news media and tired of the mainstream media. Every single time we turn on the television or we go to websites like CNN, there's some important news mixed in. But it always seems like the celebrity culture and the gossip culture and whatever the weirdness of the day is, is mixed in with this top stuff. And there's nothing wrong with looking at the celebrity culture or the fun, weird, silly news or whatever that sometimes populates some of the websites that we all visit. There's nothing wrong with that. But when they mix in things like LL Cool J's son being arrested next to ISIS purportedly getting ready to kill millions of people, that's a little bit of a disconnect. And, of course, the fact that we all know the mainstream media is feeding us a bunch of horse manure. But Gallup didn't stop there. Here's another poll. And this seems to be the same thing over and over again. Majority of Americans see Congress as out of touch and corrupt. Gee, you think? However likely drama over to fund the government passed September 30 unfolds, most Americans appear to have little faith in most lawmakers to do the right thing. Hmm, gee. Yeah, most lawmakers are corrupt, out of touch, and favor special interests, according to the poll. 48% say their own representative is out of touch. 32% say their own member is corrupt. And... Obviously, 
there is massive amounts of corruption, but that's admitted because insider trading is allowed. The fact of the matter is that we have lost faith in our so-called government. We have lost faith in our so-called electives. You know, our, our elected individuals that are supposed to represent us in all of our ways and our thoughts and our desires. There's no question that there is an ideological collapse of America that has already begun. Whether or not that will follow with a physical type of economic collapse or whatever, the, ideal, the ideology of America has already collapsed. And that's why so many of us are waiting for a catalyst to really begin. And speaking of catalysts, we're going to talk in the bottom of the hour with Joe Biggs about some of these articles. And he has some insider information about when he was in Afghanistan and Iraq on interacting with some of these extremist crazy people. ISIS nuclear weapons. This is from HNGN. Terrorist group plans to kill hundreds of millions in largest religious cleansing in history, says report. ISIS is planning to use nuclear weapons to launch a global assault on anyone who holds differing religious beliefs, all in the name of worshiping Allah, according to German journalist Jürgen Totenhofer, who in 2014 was the first Western, Western reporter allowed to embed with a terrorist outfit and live to tell about it, spending 10 days in northern Iraq with its fighters. So we're going to talk about that, too. A Western journalist spent 10 days with ISIS, apparently. And he has some stories to tell about it and their plans to do all this madness. And we'll talk about how Putin says that's basically just American-backed BS. Another report from IBT, International Business Times, Islamic State Nuclear Weapons. ISIS claims it can smuggle devices through Nigeria, Mexico to the United States. And that was on June 3rd, 2015. ISIS Nuclear Weapon, Islamic State claims it can buy nukes from Pakistan within a year. Magazine That was from May 23rd, 2015. So this has been going on for a very long time. Later, uh, towards the end of the hour, we're also going to speak to Paul Joseph Watson, who was sick today. So I decided to fill in for him. And he's going to come and host the show tomorrow. But he's also going to talk about some of the breaking and exclusives that he's got tomorrow and reveal a little bit of it today at the end of the hour as well. So let's get into some more news and also talk about there was a caller that was on hold. Unfortunately, he dropped. I wanted to talk to him. He had called into Alex right before we jumped over to the overdrive hour and was talking about people that just attack everybody. And without getting into any specifics of who he was talking about or anything like that, he did it pretty cordially. He said, you know, there's people that will just attack anybody with a message. And I find that you make yourself a target when you decide to have an opinion. Because if you think about all the historical figures, all the powerful figures that we all know today, whether you believe in them or not, whether it's Jesus or Gandhi or Buddha or anyone that you believe to be, you know, have, have done an amazing things and really stood for something, what happened to them? Well, they were harassed or tortured or killed or at least made fun of and insulted in numerous different ways and hated to this day. Because you will find that when you stand for something, others will, at the most base levels of their humanity, for some reason, hate you. And there are people... That all they want to do is kind of like if you were able to sprout wings and fly away and fly high and have an amazing life, they would just pull on those wings and pull you down to the ground just because they don't have wings. And when you decide to enter the so-called arena of information and talk about these kind of things, talk about the mainstream media dying and talk about the real information in the news and the life-saving stuff – talking about avoiding the chemicals that give you cancer, talking about all that kind of stuff, there's always going to be – a core group that will incessantly want to attack you and bring you down. And the caller was kind of touching on some of those things about total negativity and toxic people. I think it's in all branches. But really, when you make the decision to make yourself a figure of truth and a figure of anything, and we're all, we all make mistakes. We all have our own issues, right? We're all a little messed up in some ways, but we try our best overall to help people, and that's what matters most. And when you do that, you make yourself a serious target of all forms of attacks, from mentally ill people, from people that are hurting themselves, from people that really don't know what's going on. And at the end of the day, that, I think, is an important thing to consider. We'll be back. We're going to talk to Joe Biggs, not in this next segment, but in the next segment, we're going to cover all the news, more about ISIS, bans on GMO crops in the EU, more victory news, more good news. Stay tuned. 
Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. This is the fourth hour overdrive. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, your host for the rest of the hour. And you know, if you think about life just 100 years ago and how different it is today in the ways that were inconceivable at the time and the predictions of flying cars and total insanity and how wrong they were, it really puts into perspective how we don't know what's going to happen even in the next few decades. Because of the time spiral system that we're all familiar with, technology has advanced in such a way that 2030 and 2040, I believe, would be similar to 1800 and 1900 just because of the advancements in technology that we're now seeing. This article from The Telegraph caught my eye. Very interesting. Very uh, demented. By 2050, human-on-robot sex will be more common than human-on-human -human sex, says report. A shocking new report from a futurologist reveals predictions about the future of sex and robots. Pretty graphic, so I don't want to get totally into it, but it says, Can you imagine having sex with a humanoid robot? Apparently, this will be the norm in a few short decades. Dr. Ian Pearson has released a report which he predicts the future of sex. I don't think it's possible to predict the future up to 2050 because of the massive advancements in technology. I remember there's a project, I think it's called the 2055 Project, I could be wrong, and it says that by 2020, we'll start having artificial bodies, and by about 2050, we'll hit complete singularity. I don't really see that as the case. I think it'll take a bit longer than that because of the political fight for, you know, against artificial intelligence. But it is pretty insane. It's like the movie Ex Machina, which is a great movie, where essentially a tech founder that's very similar to Google starts a sex robot company and starts taking over with these concepts. And it basically he can't keep up with it. And the AI system he created becomes so intelligent that it eventually kills him. Some interesting stuff. But I want to open up the phone lines and take some calls. I also want to talk about some victory and some good news. Austria and Italy celebrate bans on GMO crops with EU opt-out. Austrian Health Minister Sabine Ober Oberhauser and a number of Italian ministers have confirmed that both countries are officially requesting an opt-out from gro growing eight varieties of GMAs permitted or to be set permitted at the EU level. So they're basically opting out, saying we don't want to grow this, we don't want this. It's a huge victory. Even if you support GMOs, it's a huge victory because they're saying, hey, we're our own individual countries and we're going to do what we want. Let's jump into some calls before the next segment when Joe Biggs is going to talk about the latest developments of ISIS and how they apparently have nuclear weapons and want to kill millions of people in total insanity. And we're going to talk about his experience in Afghanistan and Iraq with some extremists. Let's jump right into Mike from Tennessee. He wants to talk about war with big media, which ties in with the Gallup poll earlier that mainstream media is dying. What's up, Mike? Hey, can you hear me? I absolutely can, loud and clear. Well, I got a small bone to pick with Alex Jones. I was I was hoping to get to talk to him because of this bone to pick. Because the other day when he talking about the you know the war on mainstream media versus or I mean I'm sorry the war um, versus the media the war versus the press, and he doesn't bring up the death of Michael Hastings. And I've always wanted to know more about that whole story. I mean I know pretty much what is out there to know, but I don't understand, you know, I would like to know the Rolling Stones point of view. How come they don't uh, come to the, the defense of Michael Hastings and say anything about this battle that he lost? Well, it wasn't Biggs. I'm going to ask the producers because I'm not hundred percent clear on this. Well, isn't Biggs pretty close? Or wasn't he pretty close to Michael Hastings? Yeah, well, it's funny you bring that up because Biggs is about to join us next segment. He was extremely close and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he did New, couple hours about all the inside details and it was released was that wasn't it yeah he knew his family he uh knew his family really well so we can ask him that question too but yes definitely an interesting case well thank you for your call mike let's talk about let's talk to rich in new york rich you've been holding for a while how's it going yeah what's up gooch hey Listen, man uh I, uh, you know, Obama said uh, we need a civilian, uh, you know, army as big as the one we have. He's right, but we need one. We, InfoWars, the Liberty Movement, this the Minutemen, we should, that should return. You know, we need some kind of force on the ground the same way they have. You know, we need a little intimidation here. You know what I'm saying? Because just knowing is great and just spreading the word is great. But we need boots on the ground, you know, to do things. We need, we need to be proactive in this more. 
So you mean like a team on the ground telling people what's going on, or are you talking about like an armed revolution? Because I think really the battle is, and I, I can see the statistics on social media with my pages and other pages and Alex's pages. There's